This is Marlene Rabu from uh, Batang. Uh, I love listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits. I'm Sela Sadakau from uh, Vatukola. I only listen to Gold FM, only the classic hits. I'm Vale and I'm working at Golden Crow Resort and I love listening to Gold FM because it plays a really wide range of classic I'm Sein Isakio from Kashmir Lotoka. I like Gold FM, but only the classic hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Good evening, I'm Jackie Spade. This is FBC News. Tonight, Sitiveni Rambuka is the new Sidopa leader. Prime Minister calls on taxpayers to be honest and pay their dues. And Finance Minister hits out at misleading Fiji Times article. Nineteen eighty seven coup leader and former Prime Minister Sitiveni Rambuka is now the leader of the Social Democratic Liberal Party. Rambuka was elected in a special meeting of the Sidelpa Management Board in Suva today. Tokasarai Nima reports. Major General Sitiven Rambuka, the man who led a military coup in almost 30 years ago, has returned to politics as the new leader of the Social Democratic Liberal Party. His first promise, doing things differently. Well, uh, in the past, uh, I enjoyed a lot of freedom. And uh, we suffered because I enjoyed the freedom I had as a party leader, as party president. Now I work in, in an organization and it's... I understood the, uh, the structure of the organization before I, I agreed to be nominated. I have to abide by that. The election hasn't come without internal conflict. Sodelpa Youth Wing President Peter Wangabonobono has resigned in protest. Outgoing party leader Ro Temomu Kepa also spoke out about her objection, but has given in to the will of party members. Now that the Major General has taken over from me as the new party leader, I wish him all the very best. For a long time, I did not support him. I opposed him on behalf of the youths and women's wing of the party. This is not an easy position because he has to take us forward to the 2018 general election. Rambuka also presented a traditional apology for the 1987 coup. He says there are no changes on the horizon for Sorelpa at this stage. I have no right to make any immediate changes. I go along with the party line and any changes will have to be decided by the management board through the proper process. Rambuka Songo Songo Babu Tuke lost the 1999 election he also lost the bid for Sodelpa leadership in 2014. Tokas Reinima, FBC News. Prime Minister of Orenge Mbani Marama has reminded Fijians to pull their weight and pay taxes. Mbani Marama was speaking at the opening of a new office for the Fiji Revenue and Customs Authority in Bai yesterday. Madhim Bolaitamana reports. Fiji has one of the lowest tax regimes in the world, a 20% flat for everyone except for high income earners. Prime Minister Vorengi Mbani Marama says the government needs taxes for vital development works that improve the lives of Fijians. We have also some of the most attractive corporate tax rates in the region and the world. So there is no reason, no reason for any Fijian not to pay what they uh, legitimately owe in tax because the government takes a much smaller proportion of people's earnings than many, many other countries, including our larger neighbors, Australia and New Zealand. But Marama says anyone who tries to evade tax or falsifies their income to pay less tax than they should is committing a crime. Tax evasion, as you know, is a crime. A crime just as serious as stealing from the employer or breaking into someone's home. Tax evaders are essentially robbing their fellow citizens of what they're entitled to receive. And we treat this city with a punishment it deserves by imposing severe penalties on those who do so, including jail terms. He says people who are evading taxes are only fooling themselves. 
There's been a thousand and fifty over the years of some people thinking it's clever to beat the tax rate. People have boasted of uh, people have boasted about evading tax, it is something to be proud of. But it's all part of a culture of dishonesty in Fiji that uh, isn't smart at all. In fact, it's a national embarrassment that is holding Fiji back. The new FRCA office in Ba will strengthen compliance and enable the government to come down harder on tax evaders. FRCA has been allocated an operating grant of $42 million in the new budget. Madhim Bolitamana, FBC News. The Fiji Revenue and Customs Authority will rely on the honesty of taxpayers for the bulk of its revenue collection. Chief Executive Viswanath Das says FERCA is optimistic heading into the new financial year because compliance has been improving over the years. The Fiji Revenue and Customs Authority has to generate about $2.8 billion revenue for the government. Government uh, extending its partnership to the private sector so much and uh, the low tax rates and everything, you know, it's just a matter of voluntary, you know, there's, there's no point evading it. So the, for the new financial year, our drive is really to provide assistance and of course those who try to defraud will have to face the harsh consequences. FERCA Acting Chief Executive Viswanath Das says their job now is to provide an enabling environment and conducive systems. These, Das says, will make it easier for complying taxpayers to pay their dues. In the new year, we are investing into the new uh, electronic uh, uh, data system so to connect uh, retailers to the tax office so we get uh, correct sales information for taxation purposes. Tax and duty concessions announced in the 2016-2017 budget will mean revenue losses of about $5 million. However, the tax collection agency says it's more than capable of covering for this shortfall. Ritika Pratap. FBC News. $200 million has been distributed among very various ministries for tropical cyclone Winston rehabilitation. Minister for National Disaster Management in Nyeseraratu says this is necessary to bring the lives of ordinary Fijians back on track. Sainiani Boiler reports. Fijians who lost their homes and had their schools affected by tropical cyclone Winston now have a reason to smile. The rebuild effort is a significant amount of money, uh, more than $200 million that actually has been set aside for the rebuild. $207.9 million has been provided in total for rehabilitation and reconstruction works. $142.6 million will be used to rebuild and repair all education facilities immediately. Uh, we, we are thankful that... Uh, the recovery um, uh, allocation, uh, which is consistent with the post-disaster needs assessment and the recovery framework, uh, has also uh, been pulled together uh, under Head 50, and for us uh, it gives us relief as well uh, when we're looking at uh, the work to be uh, undertaken. The post-disaster needs assessment compiled by the World Bank has put a total damage bill of $2.8 billion. $1 billion has been allocated for disaster relief and rehabilitation fund, immediate response to any disaster through the Prime Minister's Trust Fund. Sainia Nimboila, FPC News. The Fiji National Council for Disabled Persons is elated with measures in the new budget that will encourage businesses to hire people living with disabilities. There is now a 300% tax rebate deduction for salaries paid to such employees. Sainiani Boiler again with this report. The incentive is designed to get people with disabilities into the cycle of productivity enable them to earn a living and become effective members of society. Finance Minister Aya Sayed Liam says most disabled people are capable of being productive workers. Similarly with people with disabilities, you give given a 300% tax deduction and you must employ them for three years because there are a lot of people who we consider disabled who are very able to be able to be gainfully employed. Fiji National Council of Disabled Persons Executive Director, the city of Niamiyanu Tower says this is more than what they have hoped for. 
we, we are happy about the, the, the overall budget uh, allocation that is given to the, um, uh, to the disabled population. We are all smiling and uh, you probably have seen uh, uh, the group from the, uh, the disabled people's organization that was standing here earlier. Uh, they were full of smiles as well because uh, it, it, uh, to me it was uh, probably beyond our, our expectations and the expectations of the council as well. Persons living with disabilities will no longer have to pay bus fares thanks to government subsidies. The government will also provide a new bus and other facilities to cater for people with disabilities in the Western Division. The government will also provide a new bus and other facilities to cater for people with disabilities in the Western Division. An increased funding of 0.42 million is provided in the 2016-27 budget to also assist in the implementation of the rights of people with disabilities. Sanya Nimboela, FBC News. Coming up on FBC News, Ministry takes NCD awareness to grassroots. And government promotes well-being of civil servants. Stay with us. Sam Rocks. My name is Denasa and I'm from Lutoka and I love listening to Today FM. My name is Lulamila. I work at Golden Point Resort. I love listening to Today FM. It rocks in Rakiraki. I'm Mary from Mandera. I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. We love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. Today's hit music on Today FM. Welcome back. This is FBC News. Finance Minister Aya Said Kayum has hit out at today's front page article in the Fiji Times. Said Kayum says the article insinuates that the budget provides $5 million for the Prime Minister's office and the same amount for his official residence. He says the report deliberately distorts information. The $5 million will in fact be used for the official residence of the Prime Minister, the President, the Chief Justice and for Boron House. The budget will be debated in a week's time. And as a media organization or media organizations, your job is to try and get the right information out, not to put a political twist to it. But unfortunately, these people have decided to do that, the Fiji Times. And that obviously undermines the credibility as a leading, supposedly leading newspaper. An expression of interest for all official residences is already out. A six-year-old student has died after she was hit by a vehicle driven by a 31-year-old salesman yesterday. The incident happened along Kalo Kalo Crescent in Asino at around 3 p.m. when the victim allegedly ran across the road from behind a bus. She was rushed to the CWM hospital but was pronounced dead on arrival. The driver is in custody. Finance Minister Ayas Said Kayum yesterday met with his team responsible for implementing the 2016-2017 national budget. Said Kayum says the team is planning how to work with respective ministries in rolling out the new financial plan. He says they have been directed by the Prime Minister to act quickly on much of the capital works announced in the budget. As you know, we changed the fiscal year uh, to ensure that we have uh, implementation at a much faster rate. Uh, you know, the non-traditional uh, period has been the 1st of Jan to 31st of December. And that obviously was a much slower period in particular after Jan or even before Jan itself. So now um, we're very much on the ball uh, and the flexibility of the calendar year not being the beginning of the financial year obviously gives a much greater flexibility. A large chunk of the budget has been allocated for rehabilitation of infrastructure post-cyclone Winston. The finance minister and the team will meet with all permanent secretaries next Friday. A double-story home at Gaji Road in Suva has been partly destroyed by a fire around midday. It is believed the fire started from a bedroom. A family was inside the house at the time, but managed to escape unharmed. Moizal Ali, a tenant in one of the ground floor flats, says he was at the National Sports Day when he received the call. It was around, I think, 12, it was around 12. And then, and then luckily I checked my phone and there was a call coming. And once I had a call, I said, can I just come quick? The house is on fire. And then I just finished from this post, then I came back home and I just found out just saw everything. I was really nervous and shocked what's actually happening, really panicking about mom since uh, mom is being really sickly and actually luckily the house girl managed and the landlord is handicapped as well. 
An investigation is now underway. The rising concerns of non-communicable diseases has led to the Ministry of Health and Medical Services awareness program a step further. Youth of St. Mark's Anglican Church in Newtown, Asinu, have partnered with the Ministry to fight NCDs. Ali Kimbia has more. As the country celebrates National Sports Day, this youth and the Newtown Rugby Club have made it a day to join the fight against NCDs. NCD, you are a bacteria, but he can't kill me. I can only advise him and put on some program like Salome and the team has done, bring some speakers to speak to you, hoping that you, the bacteria, can change your lifestyle. Program Director Salome Tukana says the campaign has been ongoing for the past two months and the aim is to reach out to young people about the need to make healthy choices. This wellness campaign was initiated last year by the youth committee then who felt that we needed to create some awareness with regards to health and wellness. The wellness program has already started to impact the lives of participants. I can really feel that this wellness program has benefited me physically, especially my leg and my whole body, and the way I look after my health. For the Newton Rugby Club, this has also helped us in our training, especially the food that we eat and how we maintain a healthy lifestyle. The Ministry of Health will continue to form partnership with religious organization and various sporting community to minimize non-communicable diseases. Ali Kimbia, FBC News. Civil servants have to be in top form, both intellectually capable and healthy in order to deliver high quality services. This was highlighted by President Major General Chiochi Kondrote at the Civil Service Sports Day at the USP ground in Suba. Kelly Vavala has the details. This year's National Sports Day theme is Resilient Healthy Community through Sports for a Wealthy Fiji, aimed at government workers providing the best service with healthy mindsets and lifestyle. The gist of my message is that civil servants must focus on their health status. Fiji needs civil servants who are not only highly intellectual, but honest and committed to the nation. But the nation, importantly, needed or need healthy workers. I therefore appeal to all of you to help Fiji to lead by example in choosing a healthier lifestyle. Aim to improve the delivery of professional, efficient and effective services to the public. They also aim to facilitate the country's socio-economic development. It is given that government will rely on civil servants to be in top form. In other words, we've got to be fit. For many civil servants, this is a much needed initiative, focusing on personal health and using it to improve output ministries then can come out and enjoy the day, but uh, more importantly, just uh, taking care of their health. To be a good uh, sportsman and uh, sportswoman in the future, I think uh, not to smoke and uh, have drugs. NCDs are an issue in Fiji, and we're really trying to encourage everyone to get out and be active today. The president highlighted having a national sports day for the country is important in terms of the fight against non-communicable diseases and the physical and mental well-being of people. Kelly Vavala, FBC News. Training gets tougher for sevens players from next week. And Fiji Primary prepares for the IDC. This and more coming up. आपको खरगंगा के रंजुला का नमस्कार रेडियो फिजी की सुंदर सुंदर यादों का खजाना एकदम बचपन के दिन याद करा देते हैं हमारा नाम जोनी नायडू है हम रहता है मलोरो में और हम टैक्सी ड्राइवर है हम सब टाइम अपन टैक्सी में रेडियो फिजी टू सुनता रहते हैं हम सिंगाचोका के हैं हमारा नाम है रोजी हम यहाँ पे रेडियो फिजी टू सुनता राम राम मैं रेम प्रसाद बोलता हूँ तब बता हूँ कोई रहता हूँ मैं जब ही सुना रेडियो फिजी टू ही सुनता हूँ रेडियो फिजी टू देश की धड़कन
Welcome back. You're watching FBC Sports. Vodafone Flying Fijians team has lost its test match against Georgia by 14-3 at the ANZ Stadium. Both teams were locked 3-all in the first half, but Georgia came firing in the second spell, scoring a try in two penalties. Fiji's only points in the game came through the boots of Ben Volavola. Georgia finished the only team unbeaten in the June Test Series. The level of commitment shown by the Vodafone Fiji Sevens players has impressed coach Ben Ryan. Ryan says training will intensify as the team enters its third week of camp. Vashnil Prasad reports. They have been training for two weeks now and the Vodafone Fiji Sevens stars are feeling the heat. Players get two days off after a run at the San Dews in Singatoka tomorrow. Get 48 hours off before third week, which um, is going to be the hardest, perhaps the hardest they've had all year, uh, I would imagine, ne next week. Um, and, and then we'll tape a week four and then we'll smash them again, five, six and, and, then, and then seven will be the Olympics. These players have put everything on the line just to make it into the final team. Apart from playing 14 minutes of intense rugby, the team has to get the set pieces right. The coaches are also focusing on kicking, which is crucial for restarts and conversions. You can see in the background we've got a, a post that's cut in half now, you know, and we're getting the boys just to aim for one side of it so that they're getting as, as accurate as they possibly can on all the various things we can measure. While Ryan and Skipper Osea Kolenisau are firmly in charge of the team, the competition among the other players is tough. Yeah, the competition's there. People are knocking six bells out of each other at the moment on the field and they all want to get into the side. Uh, guys are starting to emerge as well as, as contenders, so you know, I'm very pleased. It's very exciting on the field at the moment. These players have three more weeks to impress Ryan to make their dream of playing at the Olympic Games a reality. Vashnil Prasad, FBC Sports. The Superside continues its lead on the Skipper Cup points table after coming from behind to beat Motherwata 2014 in Lombasa this morning. The match had to be rescheduled to today due to the, due to the unavailability of the ground tomorrow. Eleanor Trangaview has more. The strong Motherwata side gave Suva a good game today with their strong defence and performance. Having scored two tries which were successfully converted, the water led 14-8 at the breather. But the Suva side had the last say after scoring another two tries to end the game with 20 points to 14. Coach Sayasi fully acknowledged the Matuata side for the tough game played today. It's uh, quite a hard, hard game uh, in terms of the intensity and the humidity. Uh, we didn't expect this. Uh, no, no, sorry, we expect this kind of weather, the humidity in, uh, in La Paz. Eh? So it, it took us uh, 10 to 15 minutes to adjust and acclimatize before we hit the ball run. The water team also played well today. Uh, they saw a lot of uh, courage and determination to, to, to try and beat us soon. Suva now sits with 28 points on the Skipper Cup points table and the side is optimistic of achieving its target in the competition. Uh, we have two aims this year, that is to, to be in the top eight uh, for the new format and also try to, to top the standing after the uh, round robin competition and uh, hopefully host one of the semi-finals. Suva hosts Naita Siri in the next round of the competition while Madhuata will host Northland. FBC Sports. The Southern Zone Primary School Sports Association is preparing for its inter-district championship. Five districts took part in a qualifying football tournament in Alsori today. Bajnil Prasad with the details. It was an action-packed day for these kids celebrating National Youth Day. The Southern Zone Primary School Sports Association taking advantage of the holiday to host its zonal meet. The winners will get uh, uh, trophies and Profits together with few uh, cash prizes, together uh, also runners up will be getting profits and cash prizes too. Navua, Suva, Televu, Rewa and Nasinu fielded teams in the under 10, 12 and 14 divisions. The winner of this uh, under 14 team will, uh, part, will be representing Southern in the major IDC. While we have the other three zones, we will we will have the zonal playoff and the winners will be from that uh, zone will be also taking part in the major IDC and the Fiji football. Fifteen teams in under-14 grade will be in action during the inter-district championships in October. Fiji Primary Sports President Ami Chan says they hope all zones will confirm participation soon. In the northwest zone there are five districts and in southwest zone there are four districts and in northern there are six districts. 
they will be competing at the zonal level to have the qualifiers or under 14 winners to take part uh, or to represent the zone. With excellent support pouring in, the association is hoping for another successful year. Vashnil Prasad, FBC Sports. The National Sports Day Chess Blitz defending champion Calvin Prasad has retained his title today. Prasad claimed the victory in the round robin tournament with eight wins and a draw, while Manoj Kumar came second with eight points. In the women's division, Cabrina Tarubea was crowned the champion, and Mohar Jordan David won the intermediate division. The Fiji Chess Association will host its next tournament in two months' time. Lastly, in sports, don't forget to watch the Anthony Joshua versus Dominic Brazil fight live at 8 a.m. tomorrow only on FBC TV. <laughs> The Biosecurity Authority of Fiji has reported two former staff to the Fiji Independent Commission against corruption and police. BAF Executive Chair Xavier Riaz Khan says independent audit findings confirmed the involvement of these employees in fraudulent activities. Khan says the report from the external auditors has exposed a number of grave discrepancies, which he describes as appalling and unwarranted. He says the financial discrepancies are extensive with significant transactional errors through BAF's financial systems. The chair says FICAC and police will investigate further and decide on any criminal prosecution. Fine weather prevailed over most parts of the country today. Looking at the temperatures, it was cool, experienced throughout the country except Lombasa. Silva and Savasaba were on 28, Nandi and Lautoka were on 29 degrees, while Lombasa was the highest on 33 degrees. Outlook for tomorrow, it's fine apart from isolated brief showers over the eastern parts and interior of the larger islands. Elsewhere, fine, cool at night, moderate easterly winds, pressure times. And the further outlook is for Sunday, expect much of the same. And recapping the main stories for tonight, a former politician Sipiveni Rambuka elected Sedalpa leader. Prime Minister Borenge Mbani Marama calls on dishonest taxpayers to pay their dues. And Finance Minister hits out at misleading report on the Fiji Times front page. For these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. To our poll question for this week, we are asking, should there be a film about the Fiji Sevens team? To answer, visit our FBC website. Be sure to send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email citizenseyes at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page, FBC News. And if you're on Twitter, follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC underscore news or simply hashtag FBC News. You've been watching FBC News. I'm Jackie Spate. Have a safe and enjoyable weekend. Nemo the Manta. Kulo mana Fiji, nada ko pelasio matairi, awan mai nainan bulu bulu tapi uni, awas satu kau nanti, andu telite ina warongo, ena bola FM. Bola, bola FM, nombor dua en seri.